What's up, everybody? Welcome to youtube.com slash awesomewalter. Please subscribe if you haven't. We are here to talk about Season 5, Episode 4 of Samurai Jack. I apologize that I wasn't able to get this up over the weekend. I was over actually in Los Angeles for a uh, movie premiere that I was in, uh, which you guys will hear about more. But we're here to talk about Samurai Jack. So uh, this episode, I think, was probably... It might be the weakest of the four so far. It just felt like it was meandering too much. It was uh, a little dull and just didn't push enough of the story forward. We have so few of these episodes left that I really think that they should be pushing everything they can with each episode. Each episode should be a wow moment. This was not a wow episode. Um, what we got from this was a, a new kind of a new character, Ashi, which is one of the daughters of Aku that we saw established in a previous episode as a little girl um, who wasn't really taking to the uh, training to fight Samurai Jack as much. But at this point, she's definitely pretty evil. What I really liked about the beginning of this episode is we get to see Jack feel really guilty for what he did in the previous episode, which was kill all the daughters of Aku except for Ashi. Um, so he got those, uh, those crows or ravens or whatever squawking murderer, murderer at him, which was very interesting. Um, so that was kind of satisfying too, because we saw him kind of cross the line in that last episode, which was warranted. I mean, he was fighting for survival, but at the same time, we never saw the character cross that line before. And the fact that he at least feels very guilty about it, uh, means that he still has his heart, uh, which is something that is very important to this show. Um... So, why I think this was just kind of a meandering episode is because just in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a forest that's snowing, they get swallowed up by a giant creature, um, and they're basically inside that creature the whole episode, and they're just kind kind of trying to make their way out. Um, there are a few good moments when they're in there, especially this here, the, uh, the moment here, the scene uh, with these really nice purple visuals, um, and, and sort of everything's glowing in the dark. Um, that, I think this was used in the trailer for the season uh, before it came out. But this was a very beautiful visual scene and we get to see that other version of Jack come back again um, and sort of taunt him, uh, just saying to leave her there, nobody cares about her, let's get out of here. It's the selfish side of, selfish side of him uh, trying to convince him that uh, to look out for number one. But Jack still has his heart, like I said before, so he is trying to uh, keep Ashi with him. I mean, he has, he has her chained up because she keeps trying to attack him, but. He, he's trying to save her and get out. Um, and we see at the end of the episode that they do that. They're on this island, and we see Ashi about to attack Jack because he had his back turned. Uh, but she has a flashback about uh, these ladybugs that were flying in the air and how the, her teacher uh, in the Daughters of Aku crushed the, the ladybug and was just not a nice person, obviously. Uh, so we see Jack doesn't crush the ladybug, uh, and there's a, a line that the, the mother of Aku, or whatever you want to call her, uh, says that was that was like uh, there's not room for beauty in this world or something like that and Jack uh, does not crush that ladybug so she sees that sort of as a sign that maybe he's right he's been trying to convince her this whole time that he's on the good side and that Aku is the evil one so uh, it's going to be a cool ally to have for Jack going forward we'll see where this partnership goes um, but the episode itself, besides that, it just didn't push enough stuff. Uh, we needed more stuff happening. We had a, a decent action scene with Jack ripping off one of these bugs that were inside the, the giant creature's uh, legs and slicing up people like he had his um, his sword on him, which was... I mean, it was okay. I mean, I guess they need a replacement for his sword. Um, but that was kind of like, alright, just a bug. It's a bug's uh, like leg and it's cutting through the, the same bug's teeth and stuff. I'm like, okay, weird. Random, and it was still making like the sword sounds uh, like Jack's sword makes. So I don't know. Uh, it was just kind of a dull episode for me, kind of a time waster filler episode, which we don't need. We don't need filler episodes here. Every episode needs to hit a mark, and this episode, it, I think it accomplished its goal with introducing Ashy as an ally for Jack, but it also was just kind of okay. Well, we needed some more in this, and we didn't get that. So. Um, I saw the preview for this Saturday's episode, and uh, it's a big army attack on Aku's fortress, and Aku comes out, and he's going to fight back. And at the very end, we get a little glimpse, just a couple frames, of the Scotsman, which I am very excited to see. He's an old man now. It's been 50 years since we last saw him, so he's an old man. The time does affect him, unlike Samurai Jack, so I'm really excited to see the Scotsman back. If we're going to see him with Jack in this episode or not, we'll see. Um, it doesn't look like Jack is with him on that siege of uh, 
of Aku's Fortress, but maybe we'll see them interact at the end of the episode or something. I'm really excited to see where it's going. Um, I just want less of these time-wasting episodes. We have a few episodes here. Come on, let's let's get back on track here, make things uh, a little bit more interesting, which I think they will. I, I don't have uh, too many doubts about that. So we'll see where they go with Episode 5, Season 5 of Samurai Jack, which I hopefully will get up either late Saturday night or on Easter Sunday, this Sunday. Um, hope you guys have a, a good Easter if I don't talk to you before then. Um, also, if you haven't checked out over on Channel Awesome, Top 5 Worst Zack Snyder Movies just went up. Uh, and also last week's video, Top 5 Worst Walter Bernasiak Performances. Speaking of which, I put up a poll on my Twitter, at awesome underscore Walter. You should be following me if you are not following me. Um, and I asked you guys, which of those Top 5 Worst Performances do you want to see in full on this channel? Um, I put up the three that I made. The other two were Nostalgic Critic Performances. Um, one of them uh, won by a really big margin, which was Noir, my first feature film that we made in 2007-2008 uh, with two of my best friends. So uh, you guys are going to get to see that. Noir will be going up on this channel soon in full. It's a full feature-length movie. It's like a, an hour 40 minutes or something. So strap on in to, to see that movie. Um, it's uh, it's going to be fun for you guys because if you know me here, you know I'm, I'm more lighthearted. But in that movie... I play this this badass character who's, you know, I mean, I'm 18 or 19 in that, uh, 18, so it's, it's kind of weird, but, uh, I think you guys will get some enjoyment out of it. It's our first feature. I think we really pulled off something really nice with it because it's the first time we ever really tried making something, uh, serious, and it was uh, a lot of fun to put together. This is, a is 10 years ago. It's, it's, you know, almost, no, nine years ago since it came out, so... Um, you guys are going to get to peek into the past a little bit, and I want to hear your thoughts on it. Um, so until this weekend, I will be putting up a new uh, Samurai Jack review. I will see you then, and thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share the video. I appreciate it, and we'll see you later.